hello it's Cliff here and I'm back riding the Thread Express. In this video I will begin to reveal the design of this mill attachment Thread Express. Now I further refined it from version 2.1 to 2.2. So far I've really failed to find a buyer for this invention and it's increasingly looking like I will release the design make it available to you guys. If this invention is new to you, I'll just put together a brief montage of clips from the last two videos introducing this uh, thread cutting invention just to bring you up to speed roughly with what it can do and if you've been following these videos this will help to refresh your memory. So all of these tests are coming out really well, machining hexagon nuts with threads, you can machine bolts, all in the one setting, the thread and the hexagon. And from the previous video, tests such as machining a very small slender 3mm screw that's less than an eighth of an inch with a thread milling much lighter machining loads than you get with screw cutting. Larger parts that are made out of 4140, a much bigger part here. So this particular job illustrates the advantages of thread milling for this type of application where you need a very accurate pitch over a long length where you need to get right down to the shoulder so the cutter can swing around really close there and you don't want to have an undercut for screw cutting because that will weaken it and reduce the length of the thread and where you want to machine it in a high tensile steel this is high tensile steel And you can see the cutter there is just shy of the base. Set the unit to the correct pitch thread. Juggle the cutter in to the existing thread until you're just touching on the gullet of the thread like that. And then just wind it on and extend the thread as far as you want to go. And tungsten carbide fly cutter, for example, will very easily cut high tensile steel bolt but you try doing that with a die even a high speed steel die it's a massive task okay so we've got thread express a milling machine thread cutting attachment so I'll, I'll carry on now with what i plan to do with this invention unless i get an unexpected offer in this video i'll begin to reveal the internal design and I'll probably continue to reveal the design in a following video until the design is fully revealed. You may be able to work out from this video alone how it operates. Well, why am I doing this? Well, I think there will be multiple benefits to all of us, actually. Well, the revealing, and importantly, your response to the revealing, will promote the invention. It will give me the opportunity to learn what you want. As viewers, what do you want? Do you want to buy one of these? Do you want the plan so you can build your own? Or are you just or are you just curious and want to understand it? If you let me know in the comments below this video which of those three groups you were in, um, that will 
tell YouTube to promote this video because the comments, you know, stimulate the algorithms. Um, and if you also give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribed, that will further promote this video. And that will give me a really good indication of what the demand is for this product. What type of demand it is internationally. Is it a big enough demand for me to organize the manufacture of it? Is, it, is the demand of a scale that I should organize and make available plans, technical drawings, PDFs, um, CAD models and so on? Or is it just that you want a full revelation video for your curiosity? So your response will really help us all move this invention forward. So please watch the rest of this video and then let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Well, you've seen the outside construction of the Thread Express invention. Now I'm going to begin the revelation of the internals. So see if you can work out how it works. So here I'm showing with the cover off the uh, pitch setting scales for both Imperial from 9 to 64 threads per inch and metric from 2.5 to 0.4 millimeters pitch. And you just slide the uh, pointer to the correct position and tighten up the screw, the bolt, and as simple as that, the thread pitch is set, the helix lead is set. I wonder if that's enough information for somebody to work out how it operates. I wonder if you can be the first to work it out. If you think you can see how it operates, um, let me know in the comments because the first a correct guess uh, will be dated and will be acknowledged one way or another in the future. Uh, if you're not sure, then just hold fire with your uh, guess until you get a bit more information with a future video. But if you think you know how it works, let me know. I'll be very interested to see who's cottoned on to the internal design of the pitch generating mechanism. Remember that it's all mechanical. There's no electronic uh, devices in there. It's purely a simple mechanical mechanism. Let's have a look at that setting close up. You can see there it's set to one millimeter pitch and it's remarkably accurate. Whatever pitch or threads per inch you set it to, it holds it very accurately. I've done tests of several different settings. If you're wondering how that's possible, have a look at the first video on this invention, Thread Express 2.0, and I demonstrate its accuracy in that video. All right, well, that's a bit intriguing, isn't it? If you will enjoy playing the Who Guesses First game, I suggest you don't rush to try and guess until you're sure how it works. Uh, don't have multiple guesses because well, I'll do my best to try and give credit to whoever comes up with it first. And because I can look at the timeline of the comment and the username of the comment. Um, and so I'll, I'll have an idea of who guesses first and who they were. So don't make multiple guesses. Okay, so on to more technical matters. So this is version 2.2, so there's been a lot of further refinements. And um, well, what I'll do is I'll put in some uh, information now on some of the refinements on this model in this video and in the next one or two videos where I reveal the full design so that you also at the same time learn about some of the additional uh, improvements of this 2.2 version. You might think, well, this is a bit risky, revealing all of this information. Of course, there's big risks in this. You know, it can be copied by a low-cost manufacturer and mass-produced and just taken completely out of my hands. Um, you know, but that risk is always there anyway. You know, even if I were to sell a design and have it uh, fully patented internationally um, and, and the whole process of that, um, it's just not realistically possible to actually enforce that type of protection. It's not, paint, the patenting system is not really designed for this type of niche market product. It works great if you've come up with Coca-Cola or something. Um, so, um, you know, that risk is there anyway. 
Um, oh, another possible group. You might not be in one of those three, but you might be a machinery collector uh, or a tool collector and would really like me to build you a one-off of this. I mean, obviously, to mass produce these uh, down to a, a reasonable price would be beyond my ability. I'm fully occupied making the Hallmark products and doing my tool making and precision engineering for local New Zealand customers. I just don't have the time. And anyway, the scale of the operation to mass produce these down to a price that it would be affordable for everyone is well beyond the scale of my little one-man band business. But I can make one or two off for enthusiastic collectors. Obviously, the price is much higher to build one or two than it is to do a production run of a thousand. Uh, so you need to be well heeled and deep pocketed. But I know there are machine tool collectors tool collectors out there that might be interested in that. So let me know in the comments if you're part of that group as well. And new for Thread Express 2.2 is a better design of mounting plate. You probably remember from my earlier videos that I just had an angle plate there while I was trying to work out what was the best option. And I think a permanently mounted subplate is just held on with a couple of cap screws, just pistol drilled into the side of the mill table, and that's small and low profile and out of the way, and it can stay in place, and it allows you to clip the uh, attachment on very quickly onto a vertical milling machine. And I think most people will have this type of machine in their shops, a turret Bridgeport style mill that can easily be spun round into this position. And it allows you with these uh, slotted screw holes to pivot it and set the all important helix angle. Well, let's just demonstrate installing the attachment. It's got to be pretty easy because you want to plug it in and out without any big drama. So you just slip the stud into the hole, hold it in place, slip in the top screws, put the nut on the stud, and set your helix angle, the all-important helix angle, so that the sweep of the cutter stays in the valley of the thread for you doubters. It's really needed to do accurate helical machining. So to cut a thread on this attachment, you just set the pitch, threads per inch, millimeters pitch, on the adjusting scale, one, one bolt, tighten it up, set the position, and then it is permanently engaged at that ratio. So the hand wheel is permanently connected to the rotation of the spindle and the lengthways movement of the spindle. And there's no backlash. Have a look at the dial indicator there. I'm going in one direction, I change direction, and immediately it goes the other way. Gravity takes care of backlash. The mechanism in this attachment consists of such a fortunate set of factors that all work together to make it function so well without compromise that I feel like it wasn't actually an invention, I feel like it was a discovery, that it was always there and it was just waiting to be discovered. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to do a salesman's job on it and say that it, it, it can achieve anything um, and it's absolutely miraculous. I'm, I'm talking about the internal uh, mechanism design. It just seems to have a fortuitous set of uh, features. As, as a thread cutting attachment, like any attachment, it has its limitations. It, it is scaled of a, of a small size that's designed for cutting small to medium internal and external threads. It's limited by the rigidity of the milling machine, of the durability of the cutter, uh, of the scale of the unit. Um, it can't cut massive threads and uh, it's still limited by all the various forces involved in machining materials, tough materials in the case of fasteners, stainless steel and high tensile steel. Um, it's still a time-consuming process to cut a thread. Every aspect of this development took quite a bit of time. This is about the fourth iteration of uh, guards or covers. So you can see these uh, metal guards or covers protect the internal mechanism from uh, swarthful chips. But I had to have a flexible system for the vertical slide um, that allows 
covering the slideway from chips or swarth in the various positions. I'll just wind it right up now and uh, show you it operating. Well that's close enough, I've got the cutter in the wrong place to go the full distance. I know there's been a few negative comments in forums and uh, in the comments about me claiming to have invented this attachment. Um, all I am claiming to have invented or designed is the construction of the attachment itself and the internal pitch generating mechanism. Thread milling itself has been around for decades, maybe hundreds of years. Fly cutting has been around for forever. I'm just combining some of these existing technologies into this attachment. Now it may be that I didn't originate the design, it may be that someone has already designed something exactly the same that I'm unaware of. Well, that's not a problem. It, if that's the case I'm quite happy to accept it. I know that when I invented it in, in my sleep about 10 years ago it was new to me. Um, but if it's shown that someone else has already invented it then I've just reinvented it. That's fine. I just want to help get this really useful gadget out there. All right, well, thanks for watching this, guys. And please uh, comment and like, and uh, let's get this whole thing rolling. Cheers.